and I've got my watercolor paper. And what I want you to do is I want you to look at the photo board and the steps one, two, three, and four. I'm using my Sharpie pen. First thing I'm going to do before I forget is write my name small and at the bottom in the artist corner. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is look at step number one. I'm going to start by drawing the foreground. And that's because things in the foreground overlap things in the background. So you need to draw the foreground first, then the middle ground, then the background. You need to do it in that order. So I'm going to start by drawing the foreground. And I can either look at that little square to help me see what the foreground is. Do you see the dark lines in that square? Oh, Shows yeah. a little hill and a little plant. Or I can look at the photograph, too. Or both. I can look back and forth. So here I go. I'm going to draw that little hill. And then I'm going to draw that plant, which I think is called a yucca plant. Has anybody ever cr come across a yucca plant? Maybe you've been to the southwest. I've, re I've never been to the southwest, but I... Okay, so here I go. I've got my yucca plant. I've got my, I've got my little hill. So I, I did step number one. I drew the foreground. Step number two says what? Okay, so and that shows the middle ground. It helps me see that the middle ground in that photograph really is those big rock structures, which I'm not sure what you call those. They probably have a name. So here I go. I'm going to look at that step number two, which kind of shows me how to see that. And I'm going to refer back to the photo. So those, I don't have to do these perfectly. This is nature. This is a landscape. So if I get it just sort of like that, I'm looking at the geography. I'm learning about what, what the land looks like there. But if a rock has an extra bump on it, is it, is it a big deal? No. If a tree is a little bit different, pointed different or different no. size, is it a big deal? No. You're getting the idea of the landscape from these photos. Looks like you would if you're outside doing a quick sketch. You're getting the idea. So now I've drawn the middle ground. Now look step number three, that box. Look how it shows the background. How would you describe the background? A little flat. Yeah, it's flat back there. It's just kind of this flat line. So here I go. I'm going to draw the background. Okay, step number four says what? Draw the details. So I'm going to go back to my photograph and look and see. Okay, I think there's really some more grasses on here. I'll add a few more grasses. Remember, this is a sketch, so I'm not taking forever on it. I'm doing quick lines. Um, I want to do some of these interesting lines and shadows here. Have you guys ever done cross hatching like that that shows, um, that shows shadows? This is a perfect time to do that because you're using a pen, a Sharpie marker. So do some cross hatching to show some of your shadows. You might do some of these little lines that are on the side of this. Okay, so I've drawn some details. Now I'm ready for painting. Yay! All right, so I'm going to get my paints out. And I want you guys to notice that even after these paints going through every fifth grade class in this whole town, they don't look too bad. And that's... That's over 350 artists have been using these paints. That's because every fifth grader from Gastineau, Harborview, everywhere, has taken really good care of keeping the colors clean and has cleaned out their tray afterwards, and I know you guys will too. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to um, use my little pen, and I'm going to squeeze it just gently to get some water in the first color that I ne might need. So what, guy, what do you guys think I should paint this foreground? Look at the colors in the photograph. Orange. Okay, okay. Orange. Yellow, green for the plants. Okay, yeah. here we go. Yellow, I'm going to squeeze just a drip. Do you guys see the drip in there? Yeah. Squeeze a drip into that green, and I'm just going to sketchily paint it on there, which means I'm just, yeah, just kind of quick movements, getting that color in there. Okay, um, what if I wanted to add a little bit of yellow to the tips? Should I go straight into my yellow with that green? Okay, here's the problem. I don't have a cup of water, so that's what the tissue's for. So with the tissue, you squeeze and pinch, squeeze and pinch, and I'm squeezing a little bit of water out while I'm doing that, and at first, you see how it's green? But quickly, even though the bristles might still look green, there's no green left in the water that I'm squeezing out, so I know that it's clean. So now I can go into my yellow. Okay, and I'm going to add just a few little yellow tips on here. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can mix colors. So, again, what I like to do is I just like to keep this tissue in my left hand or whichever hand you're not painting with so that you remember to just squeeze and pinch between every color. Um, what do you guys think for that little hillside? Did you say kind of orange and brown? Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to get some orange. And so I squeeze a little water into that orange. I'm going to get some orange and squeeze and pinch some brown. And I'm going to mix it in my tray right here. 
You can mix colors there if you want. So that's some artists like to kind of blend colors in the on the paper. Some artists like to mix them there. It's completely up to you. Okay, so yeah, I think I needed a little more orange. So I'll show you what I'm going to do after I move that color all around with my brush. I'm going to specifically get more orange and just drop it in there. Okay, what about painting my middle ground? I'm doing this in the same order that I drew it in. I'm painting the foreground first, then I'm painting the middle ground, then I'll paint the background, then I'll paint the sky. What do you guys think about the colors when you look at that photo? What do you think? I think for the middle, like orange, that it should be a, the orange. Like you you should then, just get more some more brown. brown. I said less brown. I think I see okay. Some, yellow. some people say more brown, some people less brown. This is where you as an artist will make those decisions when you're doing your painting. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use basically that same color, I think. And I'm just going to go with that color I mixed and put it in there. And it probably will turn out a little bit lighter, which I think is going to make it look like it's going into the distance. Right? Okay, here we go. Now I want to paint the background. Tell me about the background colors. That's a little bit of a mystery, actually. There's some shadows there. Yeah, there's, there's definitely a little bit of shadow, some dark. Gray, blue. Have you guys ever heard the term Purple Mountains Majesty? You know that song? It's one of our songs, right? Purple Mountains Majesty. Well, the reason that's in the song is because it's kind of true. As those colors go back in the distance, sometimes mountains look a little purpley. It's just part of what the haze and the dust does to the color. So this is what I'm going to do. I feel like there's a tiny bit of sort of pinkish purple back there. So I'm going to actually put a little purple right here. And when I mix that in, it's going to turn sort of that grayish purpley color. I'm just going to put some of that in my background back there. Okay, what about my what about my sky? What do you guys think? Okay. You guys notice, do you see how I'm pinching and cleaning my brush every single time so my colors are staying pure? Okay, here we go to blue. I heard somebody say darker at the top. Okay. Okay, here I go. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to go just start laying on dark blue up at the top. And I'm going to squeeze a little water just right now out of my brush, right here on the paper, and let that blue kind of blend down. Because skies are often like that. They are often lighter at the top. And you know what? Maybe I'll leave, maybe I'll leave some um, white to be like clouds. Because with watercolor, we don't have white paint to use, right? We've got to actually leave white. Well, some, but those are the fancy kind. Well, those are the not real kind actually. Real watercolor painters never use white. They they make, well, very rarely. They use white, the white paper is their white. So you can do that too. So friends, your last finishing touch is going to be to add some final details, just like you did with your drawing, some final details to the foreground, because that's where we're going to see more details. And the other thing that makes that possible is this brown has dried now, so I can do things like add a little bit of green detail and it won't blur. You know when you're painting with watercolor, if the water, if the paint is wet and you try to add a color like that, it would just go psh, and the colors would blur. So now's a good time to come back. And like if you have things like the horns of the sheep or the bright colors of the kayaks or some of the dark grasses that are in the foreground of your painting when you're getting ready to wrap yours up, come back, leave those places white, come back later and add, um, add those details last because then they won't blur. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of dark shadow in my grasses, which if I tried to do that earlier when the grass, the green grass was wet, it would have really just blurred into a big muddy pile. Okay, so artist, my last finishing touch is to clean my brush one last time till I'm sure no color is coming out of it. I put the lid on and then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to, just so I can make my paints look like they did when I got them, I'm going to use my paper towel or my tissue and just go like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close up my lid and watch how I'm going to carry my paints to the tray. I'm going to hold them flat like this and not tip them. Because if I tip them, can you, can you just remember back there's water in each one of those little cups? Yeah. And color, there's a lot of color. If I tip but the paints, can you see the red running down to the blue, running down yeah. to the black? Yeah. So hold it really flat like a tray to return to the, return to the tub. Perfect. Okay, so...